Hey, Adak, you seem like an utterly logical person, and I'm sorry to even be asking you this question since it might upset your viewer base should you answer. You've piqued my curiosity. Before we start, I gotta say, whoa, sells at work. You guys absolutely bombarded my comment section requesting that I watch sells at work. I'm so curious, what is it about the show that you like? Because I haven't seen it. Is it that it's anime and you're huge anime fans? Is it a unique way to talk about medicine that you really enjoy? Please just jump down into my comment section and let me know why you love sells at work. And I promise I will get to it, I will review it. Now, let's respond to some comments. Are you religious and can you be a medical professional and also a devout Christian? Wow, heavy question. Um, I grew up pretty much without religion. Neither of my parents are or were religious. I don't really celebrate any religious holidays. I grew up in an area surrounded by all sorts of religions because I grew up in Brooklyn, but I never saw myself as a religious person, not for any bad reasons, but just because it wasn't part of my life. That being said, I think you could be a religious doctor. As long as you're not doing anyone any harm with your own religion, practice whatever religion you want to. I think that's the beauty of living in the United States. Does reading and bad lighting have a negative effect on the eyes? Mari, it does actually, because you actually have to constrict your eyes and make the muscles of your eyes work a little bit harder to concentrate on what you're reading in poor lighting. And that sort of fatigue is not good on your eyes. Something else I wanna throw in here, looking a lot at the specific wavelength of light that's in our phones and computers, the blue wavelength of light, can actually contribute to a condition called macular degeneration. We've seen some early research on this, nothing that completely proves cause and effect beyond a reasonable doubt, but it's enough that I should tell viewers, if you can limit some of your exposure to blue wavelength light, you should probably do it. When should a girl start going to the OBGYN? That's actually a really good question. Abby, what I wanna really tell you about this first and foremost is that you don't necessarily have to see an OBGYN. You could see your family medicine doctor because we're trained in gynecology as well. The time that I would recommend that you go is somewhere between the ages of 13 to 15. If you start having sex and you become sexually active earlier in your life than 13 to 15, which I don't recommend, but it can happen, you should go at that point. And it doesn't mean that you're gonna get any tests. It doesn't even mean that the doctor is gonna examine you. It could just mean that we can have a conversation about things that you're doing, maybe some answer some questions that you may have about your body. Starting early can set a really good routine for you that you'll fall into without really worrying on whether or not you need to see your doctor or is it too late. Thomas Sears, I think you're left-handed. Maybe you're partially right, Thomas, because when I play baseball, when I play hockey, when I tried golf very poorly, I always was a lefty. So stick sports, I am lefty, but I wouldn't say I'm left-handed because I write, I eat, and I brush my teeth all with my right hand. Sweetest thing. What are your thoughts and or medical opinion on hookah and the dangers of it? Sweetest thing, I've never smoked. I've never done drugs in my life. My friends always sort of poke fun at me that I'm the person that never tried these things, but I did try hookah. And in fact, when I was growing up, I had a hookah in my house because it was something that all my friends loved doing and it was just something that was around. I didn't really smoke it a lot. I mean, I took like a pull here or there. I don't recommend it. In fact, when you look at how long most people smoke hookah, meaning how long they actually spend inhaling and breathing the air back out, it's a long time and you still have the harmful effects of tobacco, nicotine, the carcinogens from the burning of the tobacco going into your lungs. It's not benign water vapor. It's not completely innocent like a lot of people say. You're actually burning the tobacco and then that smoke goes through the water and comes out. I don't do it anymore at all and I haven't done it in ages. I don't remember, probably like 10 years ago was the last time I did it. Hookah is not safe. It's not something you should be doing. If you wanna be healthy and happy and play sports and be successful, just skip it. Flit deck. Hey, Dr. Mike, do you listen to your own heart with your stethoscope out of curiosity or boredom? I wonder if I can get the mic to hear this. <laughs> Nothing. Oh, well, I tried letting you hear my heart. Yeah, I, I've listened to it before. I haven't done it in a really long time because whenever I have this on, I'm working and I'm busy. In medical school, especially, I really listen to my heart. Wadali Studios. Love the content, Dr. Mike. What advice would you give an artist engaging in a long-term relationship with a doctor. Biggest piece of advice I'll give you is be patient. 
Becoming a doctor is a stressful, tedious, difficult, but ultimately very rewarding experience. So the more patient you can be with the person that you're in a relationship with, the more uh, open communication you can have with that person, the more successful your relationship is gonna be. I remember a lot of relationships ended during medical school, and that was something my dad constantly told me he noticed within his class as well. If you're meant for each other, you'll make it through it. If not, great, you learned something about yourself and so did, their, so did your partner. And you could take that on and find a successful partner in the future. Misophonia, hearing recurrent sounds, bells, song lyrics, and especially kids babbling, complaining, crying, drives me to pull out my hair. Could you address this condition? I don't know, I've never heard of it. Let me Google it right now, actually. Let me check this out. A strong reaction to specific sounds. It's rare, fewer than 200,000 cases per year. Usually self-diagnosable. And it says people may experience anger, anxiety. Uh, they can even develop a fear of loud sounds or depression. I've never heard about this. This is interesting. I'm learning myself. This is why I love medicine. We're always learning. We're always trying to figure out how to better serve our patients. And that's why I fell in love with the field. Doing research, being able to find information very quickly and specifically accurate quality information is a hallmark of the new modern age family physician. William Cooper. Hey, Dr. Mike, can you help me get home? I'll gladly help you out, brother, but I don't know what you're asking right now. Do you know what he's asking? I don't know what he's asking. I don't know. I don't know. Please make a video of you opening fan mail. Kareen, I want to do that. I just opened my P.O. box. I haven't checked it yet. The address is actually down below for the P.O. box in all my videos in the description. So if you want to send me something fun, please do. And as soon as I get enough stuff, I'm going to open it on one video and we can talk about what I'm getting. Just make sure if you're sending something personal and you don't want it to be in the video, make that very clear so I don't hurt your privacy. Hey, Dr. Mike, have you ever had a patient that started out with the idea that it could be a physical diagnosis, but ended up being a mental diagnosis? P.S. Love the channel. Thanks, Nick. And thank you for this question, because something I've become incredibly passionate about is mind-body disorders. And I know that sounds a little bit like a frou-frou diagnosis. It's not. The mind and body are truly one. Communication happens both ways. So if you do something that affects the body, it also affects the mind. If you get injured or like stab yourself in the leg or get stabbed in the leg, your heart rate goes up. If something is going on in your mind, you're depressed, you're anxious, your blood pressure also goes up. The mistake modern medicine makes is that there is an assumption that all medical issues come down to a physical problem, a physical root cause. And that's not the case. In doing research and in reading quality books on the subject, what I found is there are a ton of medical conditions that are actually caused by the mind-body connection instead of just a physical cause. That's why a big part of this movement in modern medicine is to seek out mindfulness because mindfulness doesn't just mean being in touch with your breathing. Yes, that could be part of it, but also it means being in touch with your emotional side of things because emotions have an impact on your physical body that's that's been proven there are a lot of patients that come in wanting a physical diagnosis or believing they have a physical diagnosis and then they walk out with their problem gone with their uh cause of the problem solved not because i did something physical to them like a shot injection or therapy but just because we had a very good conversation and they learned something about themselves from rummaging in the comment section or running around the streets i love answering your questions so please keep them coming drop your questions and comments down below also very important don't forget to hit subscribe and hit that notification bell as always stay happy and healthy try mouth today I, I said subject, subject. Anon, anon. Miso, misophonia. <coughs> anon. Oh man, he sneezes. I'm allergic to something. <laughs> anon.